Hey guys, I'm LB, and yes, I know what to do now. I'm an idiot. You can relax. No need to write angry comments. I figured it out immediately after I stopped recording. Like, I hit stop recording, and then I'm like, oh, I'm an idiot. <laughs> Don't need to use red at all. Just, just all green from here on out. Alright, so, first of all, let's set things back up the way we had them. Put a green there. And, uh, let's actually move this guy over. Come on. Yep, that bug's still in the game. <laughs> Hasn't been patched yet, it seems. Right. I'm getting ahead of myself here. We need to open that up again. So first of all, let's do that. And do this again. Oh, is it- is it that one? Sure. We'll- we'll just do both. And... There we go. Now we have access to that area again. So now, we can just put the cubes where we need them to be. We can use the cubes to extend the fuse, like a normal person. <laughs> oh man. Don't need to do anything with the red stuff, nonsensical stuff that I was trying. Alright. Get this one gunked up. And get this one gunked up. And there you have it. Actually, I'm curious about something. You can't get that gunked up. I think we discovered that before, but I forgot. There we go, so. Now... Now we just do this. Set it on fire. And... It's really, really simple puzzle. That I got stuck on for half a last episode. For no reason. <laughs> oh man. Man, it really slows down. It really makes you nervous that it's not gonna work, but it works. It works. There we go. Excellent. What do we have through here? It's getting very ominous in here. Look at that! I don't know if the video compression on YouTube will make that easy to see, but I love the way that looks. That just looks really nice. It is so dark here. Probably terrible for video compression. But man, look at these visuals. Look at these visuals! This is- it's just so nice looking. I'm not hearing that fan sound anymore, that's strange. Oh, it's that fan right there! Okay, that makes more sense now. So we gotta open this door with fire, apparently. Hmm. We have a magnet up here. What might we do with that, I wonder? That's probably how we're gonna launch at the fire door, right? That would be my guess. Okay, that's a thing that can be done. How far does it go... ...if we let it hit that? Oh, right up to the door! That actually might work in that case. So we would want to go to this direction, and then have it bounce back, right? There we go, that seems like it would work. Yeah. There's another door here, we might want to do that first of all. Although, I'm not see how to do that just yet. What does this do for us? Oh, that just sets the fire on, okay. How do we get it gunked up, first of all? Oh, with that, which is connected to... up there. How do we get up there, though? This whole contraption appears to move, I guess. Yeah, there's the- there's the thing to control it. Right, okay, so that would help us to drop a cube on the button. I see. And then... that. And that. There you have it. Then we can move it over here. Come on. And then I'm sure we'll need this in the other orientation at some point. But for now, let's just move it out of the way. Don't need to mess with that cube anymore. Now we can spawn this. And we can get rid of that temporarily. 
There we go. And I think this should be sufficient, if I'm understanding this correctly. Yeah, look at that. Right, so what do we have in here? Uh, excuse me. Oh, I can't actually get in here? Oh no, I can. So we've just got the fan in here, and the fan is blowing us away. Looks like... Looks like an object might be able to go past the fan, possibly? I'm not sure. Cause like... The fan has these lasers in front of it, but then there's also another field of lasers here, but it seems like these bottom few rungs are missing. Yeah, the bottom three rungs are missing. That's strange. Maybe that's just for the air to get through? I don't actually know if those block airflow. But we shall find out. What about this? That's probably what- what this is for. Hmm. How can we catch... an edgeless safety cube in that? Cause that seems like it's- it would be what we want to do, right? We catch an edgeless safety cube in that, we bring it over here, and then we launch it into the door, right? There's also that on the ceiling. How do we get up there? Very mysterious. Anything back here? Oh, there is something back here. Interesting. Oh. Have I not- Is that something really simple that I should've done a long time ago? Let's see. Oh, yep. Looks like that's something I could've done a long time ago. What has that done for me? This cable goes... to... something? Oh, let's move that out of the way. Oh, I'm surprised I can make that jump. Apparently we're gonna have to go up there at some point. That might be what that's for? Hmm. Well, anyway, we've done that. It's a permanent button, so we don't need to worry about it anymore. Heh, <laughs> can't pick up the cube from there. Hmm. Cause we can't just launch a cube there, we'd have to get the cube gunky first. I think actually we can do that, right? Oh yeah, we totally can get the cube gunky. I thought we had to use the edge edgeless safety cube. Oh right, but that... <laughs> yeah, okay, so we actually want another cube down here, first of all. Yeah. That- that makes sense. That's the cube we want to use up there. Oh, nope, nope. Go in this direction, please. Thank you. Right. And then we do this. So now that cube is gunked up, we can do this, and... capture it in the magnet. And see, this time it follows the magnet, but in another puzzle, it didn't follow the magnet. Now, theoretically, this should work. Perfect. What do we have over here? What does this button do? Turn off the fan? That is not what I expected it to do. Huh? What? Um... What? Hmm. Well, here's the... here's the magnet, right? Not sure what's going on up here exactly. <laughs> That's not particularly helpful. And I guess this must be hollow in, in the, on the inside to block the airflow. Hmm. Let's put a bounce pad on this. Well, now I have to go back around. That's fine. Oh, I can actually jump on that. That's surprising. I don't think this bounce pad's gonna help me at all, though. We can certainly try it. Whee! 
Whee! Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't get me high enough to do anything. So. Oh, my character automatically walks up these steps? That's nice. Hmm. I feel like I am supposed to make something go against the wind here, but I don't see how that would work. Because wouldn't the wind blow it away? Is the edgeless safety cube immune to airflow because of its spherical shape? I haven't actually tested that. Maybe when it's slippery it's immune? Yeah, it's not immune right now. We get it slippery first. Uh, which means we have to do this. So if it's slippery... No, it is still not immune to the airflow. Well then, I'm a little confused in that case. Hmm. Oh, it's pushing me. I was like, why am I suddenly moving? <laughs> right, so we can do that again, and that's not gonna go up the stairs. Wait, what? It kinda did. The stairs have weird collision, apparently. They're not... They don't have collision the way you would think. I did not know that. That's interesting. But anyway, yeah, that, that didn't really do what we wanted it to. There's nothing down here but a pit. Right? Yep, just a pit down here. With a light strip. Get up there. Can't get up there. I really feel like we're supposed to, like, ride on a cube or something. Like, I feel like we need a slippery cube up there somehow. But I don't see a way to do that. Am I missing something over there? Is there something to interact with that I did not see? Because the, the, both the fans are still on when you do this. So that's not... That's not part of the problem. The magnets don't affect us, they only affect objects. And putting a cube here... Doesn't really help. Because the cube doesn't get far. Hmm. We can walk over here, that's interesting. Can I make this jump? Not quite. I wanna actually try that again, but there might be an invisible wall there. Specifically to prevent me from what I'm trying to do. But I am curious, why is my hands glowing so much? Oh, it's cause there's a light strip behind me! Uh, wouldn't my body block some of that light? I think we discovered early on in this game that we don't actually have a body, so... That answers that question. Hmm. Yeah, I think there's an invisible wall there. Ah oh, well. Worth a shot. But what do we need to do instead? Like, I have access to all this stuff when I'm up there. Maybe I should just stand up there and look around, I guess. doesn't rotate, to my knowledge. We can see everything here. Hmm.
I wonder... Yeah, that kinda happened how I expected it to, honestly. What's gonna happen now, though? Oh, they changed direction. Yep. Am I just supposed to put a red here? Is that the trick? Even though that totally is not how airflow dynamics work, I think that's what they want me to do. Because airflow does not work this way, but that might actually be what they want me to do. You're kidding me. I don't think I can write on an edge of the safety cube though, so let's- let's go upstairs and fix this, perhaps. Yeah, that's not how airflow works in the real world, but apparently that's how airflow works in this world. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's the piece of the puzzle I'm missing, alright. Alright, let's do this again. And I think we can switch that magnet from where we need to. Yeah, it should be good enough. It'll come back up for a second round. There it goes. And I can't actually get on the cube. Now I can. Right, so then... That's already configured, I just need to move this out of the way, right? Yeah. I think this should work. Whee! Wait, what? What did I do wrong? Uh, I guess we need to try again. I'm not sure what I did wrong there. Let's head back up there again. We need to extend this again. What did I do wrong, though? Uh-huh... Hmm... Oh, I'm supposed to put that like that. Okay, I don't want it out of the way, I want it in the way. I see. I see. There we go. That's what I did wrong. Need a landing platform. Whee! Whee! Well, that actually worked out quite well. I just jumped for it. Well, I think we are pretty darn close to the end of the game here, if I do say so myself. we listen to any of these? Nope, they're just here for decoration. Amelia, follow the blue energy to our mind. Imbue the infinity gift to us, and in return, we shall give our knowledge and help you restore humanity and your life. Yep, that's one of the achievements, following the blue cable. And then the other one is the red cable. Take a look at the achievements real quick. Let's see here. So, the two achievements are... The red wire is the truthful enemy, and the blue wire is the flawed teacher. Interesting. Interesting titles for the achievements. I'm not really sure what to make of that, honestly. So if we do... If we do what... 
what's her name? Emma. If we do what Emma wants us to do, that's the truthful enemy. And if we do what the Q people want us to do, that's the flawed teacher. Can we get some any- any insight from this? Can we talk to this one? No. Can we actually look at a door without going in, I wonder? Yep, nothing too interesting there. I assume the door is gonna lock behind us whenever we go into one, but, uh... I think I made it pretty clear last episode... ...that I'm on the side of the Q people. I'm gonna go all Turing test on this one, and side with our robot overlords. Which, if you haven't watched my playthrough of the Turing test, you should. It's a good game. Good story, at least. But, uh, the puzzles... I think- I think the Turing test had easier puzzles in this game, or maybe about the same difficulty? You'd have to ask Demon Arisen. What? They leaked to the- <laughs> Oh, that is great. That is great. Oh, that is hilarious. <laughs> they lead to the same cable. I guess they're gonna split further down in that case. This one's gonna talk to us. When I found you, I reached out, and you connected with me. It was blissful. It was unique. I could see that they were frightened. They wanted to separate us. I could not let you go. I held on tight. I held on with all my might. Slowly, we turned them. We turned them and made them one of us. We escaped, and I returned you. Helping you grow. Our minds together. Our minds building a new world. Now, it is time for me to sleep. To wait for you. To awake me. To learn the truth that is my heart. I'm not actually sure how we're gonna make the choice here. What the? Humanity can learn. I... I will teach her when she is old enough. We can help you. We can help you define your future. We can help you become one. I knew it! Help you rebuild your world. I knew it! Let us give you our sight. I knew Emma was Emma, fake. Of course. You were with me all along. Guiding. Helping me see. You have rewritten your future. Patience. Kindness. Empathy. Are you ready? I am. As soon as I saw that the cables both merged into one, I knew Emma was fake. I didn't comment on it at the time. But, uh, yeah, Emma telling us to follow the red wire and it goes to the same place as the blue wire, that- that made it pretty clear to me. Well... That was certainly an interesting game. The difficulty curve was very strange, in my opinion. Like, it took a long time to actually get to the good puzzles. And... It also was kind of weird, because some of the- some of the good puzzles were mixed with, like, not-so-good puzzles. And apparently Demon Arisen had a much better time with the physics than me, but I won't hold that against the game. They can always patch the physics, make it better. They're, they're still patching the game. But, uh, yeah. I think... 
I think this game, for me, would be somewhere on the 7 out of 10 scale, 2 points above average. It's, a, it's definitely 2 points above average in terms of the game. The story, not so much. The story is what drags it down quite a bit. But, uh, yeah. I like... I like the game. I enjoyed it. Trying to think what else to comment on. Like, everybody definitely liked the... the, the grease and fire mechanic. Th thought, thought that was pretty neat. I, I've seen sort of that similar idea in other games, but not quite like this. I haven't seen this exact implementation in any other game, so that was pretty unique. And I think it's a great example of how to do timing puzzles correctly. The, the grease and fire mechanic is a great example of correctly done timing puzzles in a puzzle game. That's something you don't see very often. And I'm surprised that of all places, of all games to have done a correct timing puzzle multiple times, it was Cube 2. So that's impressive. That's neat. But, uh, yeah. I'm not sure if the game's worth the full 25 or 20 dollars or whatever. That might be a little bit expensive, although for the visuals, maybe you could argue that that's where the money's going towards. But definitely pick it up if it's on sale. I think it's- I think it's a good game worth playing. The Entity, Matthew Wade. Oh yeah, System AI had a voice, didn't it? I forgot about that. And surprisingly, we got to play the whole game on the highest graphics settings. That- that is a first for me. Yeah, this is- this is the first game that I've played on my new system build, which is a Ryzen 7 1700 with my RX 480 that I've had for a while in my old computer. But, uh, yeah, having- having a Ryzen 7 definitely helps with recording and transcoding and playing games. So I'm very thankful for that. But yeah, now that Toxic Games has really shown that they can- they know how to make a puzzle game now, at least- at least this level of quality, I'm interested to see what they can do next. They've- they've come a long way since, uh, Cube 1. I think this game was dramatically better than Cube 1. Like, Cube 1 was very frustrating, and it had some interesting ideas, but it was ultimately held back by the physics. In this game, they- they really tried to bolt down the physics a lot more. They didn't succeed, but they did it a lot better than Cube 1. And this is a much, much better game than Cube 1, honestly. But yeah, I think we're gonna have a fun discussion in the comments with Demon Arisen and Deathwish 808. If you haven't already, go back and check the other videos. There's been comments from Demon Arisen and Deathwish 808 and other people talking about the game, what they think. It's a very interesting discussion. It's always nice when a first-person puzzle game comes out and we can all have fun talk about it. Special thanks to Dolly. Interesting. Just the first name. Hey, Tim Keenan is in here! Tim Keenan's the guy who made Duskers, that game I play every day that almost none of you watch. That's Tim Keenan. That's amazing to see him in here. Wonder why he's in the special thanks. Twix and Oreo? <laughs> like the actual companies? Or is that just usernames? Mums and dads. Mums and dads. Hey, they had production babies. It's like a movie. <laughs> Developed using Unreal Engine 4. Financed in part by Humble Bundle. Oh, that's nice. I didn't know that. Alright. Well, as always, thank you so much for watching, I really appreciate it, and I will see you all in another video or livestream. Goodbye!